BJ from Morgan Gumbo. I've got my guest here, Charles Murs. He's a documentary filmmaker and the director of Game Master. We also have one of the producers, actually, maybe the guy who came up with the idea there, Jimmy. Yeah, well, it depends on who you ask. You know, he's yeah. not here, so he's not he's not on this podcast, so I'm gonna say it was my idea. Yes. So Charles, <laughs> because I heard one where I think Charles' name was mentioned like, yeah. Charles, uh, Charles, like, kind of said people to go here and said people to go there. Here's your chance to defend yourself, Charles. Totally my <laughs> idea. All my idea. <laughs> Tell us about Game Master Documentary. And while we're doing that, I've got my friend Verla LeBaron, who we now know as, where is she? Is she there? There she is. What is hey your, what, what's your new uh, position on the show? Um, I think somebody gave me the title of Gumbo Overlord. Gumbo Overlord. Welcome to the In show. In addition Welcome to being back. the board game ambassador. Yeah, so Verla's the board game ambassador. She helps us out with some of the interviews, and she and I are going to be asking you questions. So, Charles, give us that background. Yes. What's the genesis of the Game Master documentary for anybody that has this? So, so here is the truth. Uh, you know, <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> so, Jimmy and I, you know, we we were hanging out in a coffee shop back when you could do that. Um, and I don't remember those was, days. Yeah, no, those were great days. Uh, but um, you know, very normal day for us. He had he had just finished up making um well doing stuff with his with his last documentary barista and he says to me hey i got this idea for uh a documentary and i go okay i'm listening it's it's gonna be about board games and i went yeah great and said i think we should do it i think you should direct it and that was kind of where it started i immediately said yes i think we should do this um he knows from experience that to do a documentary on any subject you have to have a love for your subject otherwise you're going to run out of steam because it is a long road it takes a long time and if you are not in it for the long haul you'll run out of steam you will have no documentary at the end of the day um and so he knew that we were the right people to start with because of you know how we feel about board games is jimmy part of your game group absolutely yeah, why is you know, he buying my city if you already have a copy of my city? Why, be, he's buying my city because you know we can't play together. We, we're we're okay. We we're secluded. I, I'll give you that for one. reasons reasons beyond our control. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise I would have had him over last week and we would have cracked it open. Go ahead, Berlo. Oh, I was just gonna say hi to all the people in the comments <laughs> that keep saying hello. Yeah, I think you had a question. Oh, but yes. Um, who was the target audience? Uh, as you guys were coming up with the documentary, who did you really want to make this for? Good question. So it was it was always important. There's two answers to this. It was always important um, to me to make a movie that was accessible to people who did not play board games. You know, um, I I wanted it to be an enjoyable experience for them. You know, I, I said to somebody else, you know, there's the movie Psalm. It's about, you know, sommeliers, wine tasting. Mm -hmm. You don't have to drink wine or have even ever had wine in your life to enjoy that movie because it is about people. It is about their goals, what they want, what they're going to do to get it. Right. Um, you know, and there's a lot of stories. And I think a lot of people can relate to, you know, different ones. Everybody's got a different one that they relate to. Separate from that, you know, obviously I, it's important that, gamers there was something there for them too you know and getting to see the faces in of you know the people like Reiner Knizia, Eric Lang, um, Antoine Bauza getting to hear them speak about things and hearing their input and you know kind of things that they have learned in from being years of being in the industry um, you know it was that was important too. One and, of the things one of the things that I liked about it is that as you said the audience is wide open. I, I watched a Lego documentary about people that want to work for Lego, and I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know anything about Legos other than playing with them as a kid. And I was mm -hmm. fascinated, absolutely fascinated, because they yeah. presented it as something that was accessible to everybody. Charles, I really think you guys did that with the, with Game Master. I mean, Oof, you you it, it is it is in some ways a love letter to the board game hobby, in mm -hmm. some ways an introduction to the board game hobby, and if yeah. you saw my review, in some ways, I want to see the why. Mm -hmm. I want to see what's going on behind the scene. I, I, I'm that person that wants to take the Imagineering tour at Disney and figure out how they do the magic. And somehow you jucked, you juggled all three of those things, Charles. How'd you do that? Uh, it wasn't easy. You know, a lot, a lot of talks between uh, me and the producers and the editor, John Barry. Uh, a lot of talks about what was at the heart of the documentary, you know, kind of the philosophy that we wanted to carry through from beginning to end. 
beginning to end of the documentary and beginning to end of production. Um, you know, it was, it was just, we, you know, we watched it, I don't know how many times and, you know, broke it down to segments. Is this working? That was the question we always asked, like, is this working? Would someone want to turn this off? And, you know, if the answer was yes, we got to figure out what, what is the thing that isn't working, you know, and it's, I will say something interesting. It's um, Charlie Bink, who is one of the, the, the designers that we follow in the movie. Um, he is a huge board game fan. That's him right there. He's a huge you know, board game fan. He knows all of the, the people. And he was one of the first people that we talked to. And back before we had all of these named designers, um, he had said, you know, we, we kind of gave him the, the overall, the elevator pitch, you know? And then sure. as time went on, um, he kind of heard all of the names that started to be involved. And he's like, I, you know, I thought this was going to be a documentary for everybody. And you're kind of getting like the A list of game designers here. And I was like, yeah, you know, they're, they're there too. You know, and we're happy to have them. And, you know, um, we've got some questions in the chat for you. Uh, Mick from our family plays games. That's Mick and uh, Starla. Let me see if I can find this question. He says, what about POCs, people of color? Would they relate to this movie? And, and Verl, I'm sure you're thinking the same thing as me. An ancillary question. Are they in the movie? Right. They are in the movie. So we follow four newer, you know, kind of first time designers. Two of them are POCs. One of them is a Mexican American. His name is Jason Serrato. Another one is a Pakistani girl by the name of Nashra Balagamwala. So uh, POCs are very featured in the movie. That's Nashra right there. Um, so she has made a game called Arranged. She's from Pakistan. And in Pakistan, it is uh, arranged marriages are a little more common than they are in the US, you know? Right. Um, and at a very young age, she heard about this. She realized that this is not for me. I got to get out of here. She went to the Rhode Island School of Design where one of this assignments was to make a board game. And so she made a board game about avoiding arranged marriages, right? Um, and so to find people with different backgrounds, you know, so in giving them you know, seeing how they're sharing their unique perspective, uh, that was very important to us. And, you know, we, we tried we tried our best to do justice to that in the movie. Can I tell you something? So Steve and I have talked about this a lot off air. Nashra and Charlie, to me, are the kind of quiet stars of this show. They're, or maybe what I, I was going to say is, yeah, Verla, the... Yeah. Their stories were the most compelling to me. This is nothing against mm -hmm. Jason and Scott. Actually, mm -hmm. Scott Rogers, to me, He's awesome. I mean, you know, I've reviewed one of his games, uh, the one you guys mentioned. Uh, mm -hmm. He's got a passion for gaming that just doesn't stop. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I I, I hear about it all the time. <laughs> but there, no, he's he's he is he's literally. I could listen to that guy tell stories forever. In fact, I said in my review, and this was one of the downsides. That I said is that I would love to have seen even more of him just pitching games to publishers because man, can he tell a story? But that being said. Nasha and Charlie's stories, and I'm not giving any spoilers because I because I want people to watch this documentary. I don't I don't want you to give any spoilers, but what I want to know why why do you think Nasha and Charlie uh, just hit the target with so many viewers? Because it doesn't sound like me, Verlin, and Steve are the only ones that have told you that. So here's what I'll say: something that I love, uh, you know, whenever anybody tells me, "Oh, I related to this person the most," I'm always thrilled to hear that <laughs> because. Because a lot of the time, it is a different person for everybody. I have people walking away telling me that Scott is their favorite person. Um, that, you know, Scott, who's a father, he's got two kids, his daughter's in the movie. A lot of people have said, Scott reminds me of my dad, you know? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people see Jason Serrato, who made a game called Thug Life. It's kind of based on some of his experiences as a younger person. Uh, a lot of people see the the complexity and in, in the inner conflict um, that he's dealing with throughout the movie. And a lot of people relate to that. So, you know, you ask me why you think uh, Charlie and Nashua are the standouts. They're the standouts for you. And other people might have a different standout, but what's at the heart of it is something, you know, each of person has a unique, compelling story. Um, and that is the, that is something that I'm very happy with. All right, Verla, your turn. Let's see here. Um, so with being so immersed in this project, uh, 
as a gamer, did you burn out on your love for gaming, just working so hard to make the documentary? Well, having said that I just played Azul last night, I'd have to say that the answer is no. I'm still, still playing uh, games all the time, and it's not just because of quarantine, you know. Um, uh, you know, well, while making the documentary, it, it's kind of interesting because we couldn't play during the day. We went to all these conventions. We couldn't play any games because we're running around making a movie. But, you know, while we were driving around the country, interviewing people, and even at the conventions, um, you know, we're in a we're in a city that we're not familiar with. So, you know, what do we do at night? We played board games. That's when we played our board games. Nice. And so that was, that was loads of fun. Let me follow up on that. And and just for a second, let me punch a button. So every no one is watching. It's just me and you, Charles. <laughs> okay. All right. Watching. Tell the truth. Jimmy just wanted to go to Essen. Come on. Tell the truth. <laughs> he wanted he wanted an easy way to get to uh to Gen Con. And an easy way to get to the spiel. You know, so, so hey, Jimmy, you can write it off on your taxes. Jimmy did not make it to Gen Con. Uh, he oh. did make it to he did make it to Essen. And uh, you know, there was a theory between me and one of the other producers, Wally Shross, that that was that was really what was going on. <laughs> it was just it was just an excuse to try to get to Essen. Okay, so let's answer some of the critics. One of the critics said, "You guys talked about uh, Essen. You got y'all talked about." Um, the spiel is yours. Mm -hmm. And it yeah. was sort of like a grafted on thing. If you saw my review, I didn't think so. Mm -hmm. I saw it as, and I, I'm tr I'm trying to mind read here. I okay. saw this as, Charles, this is this is your first documentary, although you've been involved in film. This mm -hmm. is, this mm -hmm. is you being the director, right? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And this was your chance, like Bruno Cathala's chance, to leave a legacy on a hobby that you love in a medium that you love. Well, yes, there's some truth to that. And I have to say that to do that, you know, <clears throat> we had to make the choice to kind of show as best we could a, a complete, as complete of a picture as we could. And, you know, without Essen and without uh, the Spiel de Jar ceremony or just talking about the award, it's, it's not complete. And so, you know, to me, I understand what that person was saying. I know which review you're talking about. I understand what that person was saying, and I'm fine with it because you know this was the choice that we wanted we wanted to make. We wanted to show these things because we thought they were important. When you see Bruno Fiduti's face at the end, and his friend, he doesn't talk about the award. He does talk a little no. bit about how he, oh, now he's going to be able to make a living. But really, yeah. what he talks about is Bruno Cathala has made his imprint on board gaming. Right? You know, That's true. Hearing Antoine Bauza and hearing Bruno Fiduti talk about Bruno Cathala, their friend Bruno Cathala, right. and how happy they were for him, that I, I love that part. It's like a, it's like a big, big thing. These are the stars of our industry, and yet they're really just friends playing games and making yeah. games. Yeah, Bruno, what you got? I think it all goes back to story. Just tagging on what you're saying and everybody's individual personal story. Um, so what do you hope that the audience of this show uh, learns from it? What do you want people to walk away with? Well, you know, uh, talking to people throughout making this and hearing people's reaction when I said, oh, I'm making a documentary on board game designers. Um, people have no idea that, first of all, they hadn't even realized it was a job. And as soon as I said it, they were like, oh, of course there's a job. Of course there's a person there. But people just kind of have no idea how these things are made. You know, are, are people locked in a room at Parker Brothers until they come up with a game? Is it a brain trust? You know, how does it work? How does it happen? And, you know, another way to look at it is let's say that, you know, not you, but another person, let's say a person has the greatest idea for a board game ever. You know, they probably have no idea how to begin to start making that game a reality. So one of the things that I wanted people to walk away with was, you know, to kind of have an idea about how to do it. Um, you know, and I've had people in the industry who've been in the industry for, for years say, I watched the documentary and I learned things because I kind of operate in my own bubble. I kind of know only what's necessary to my operation. Sure. And, you know, they, they learned what different parts of the industry are like, which mm. was great to hear. Nice. PJ from Morgan, we go, well, I've got my guests here with Verla LeBaron. We're talking to Charles Mers, the director of the documentary Game Master. I've got two last questions for you. The first one, the picture on the screen. I did some research and I found out, if I understand right, you're making a horror movie. Is that right? Uh, yeah, that's correct. <laughs> so it's been so long since it's, I've been yeah. around big crowds like this. When I see those elements, and, and by the way, I've been both on that side 
and on the publisher side where we're waiting for that crowd to come in you have a you have a beautiful shot of the crowd just rushing in you know that's that's one of the most well-behaved crowds i've ever seen in my life it is you're right. You're right. <laughs> but wow you know six months ago i'm excited and i'm joyful seeing that picture now i'm like Charles, oh, you, yeah, what's your no. prediction are we going to get away. back to that horror movie at some point you know i i hope so i hope so only time will tell uh, i'm confident and, and optimistic that we will last question you get this all the time i'm sure i've been cycling through the pictures all the different people jason with the, with the talk about his his home life and where he grew up and his compadres uh obviously nash was talking about you know how the game is developed the the super cool insight at, at ludifax seeing how the the magic is made but all these different you know the interviews with dr ryan Benicia, antoine boza bruno cathala i mean all these luminaries what's your favorite part or what's your favorite story about making this documentary um, that's that's like asked me to to pick which one of my children is my favorite here we and go. I can't. I can't do it. I can't I do it. No, they're all. They're, you know, I, I don't have children, but if I did, they'd all be my favorite. Is there an inspiring moment for you in this in this whole documentary? There is actually. I will say this. Um, to, I mean, God, I, I, you know, I watched so many parts of it in chunks, just like over and over again on my own. Um, so one of my favorite parts is actually. I, I you know, I can't say it. I, I, I can't say where it happens because it's kind of a spoiler, but Alan Lee, the creator of Exploding Kittens, is such a great speaker. And when he speaks, he is so inspiring. So there are times when I listen to bits of him um, and, you know, just what he has to say about creation and, you know, and how you're going to fall down a hundred times and you're going to pick yourself up and then you're going to fall down a hundred more and you just got to try again at the end of the day maybe you'll have something great like hearing hearing him speak about that 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 is one of my favorite parts because it's inspiring i'm gonna go with one last one we've seen a lot of familiar names to anyone that's seen this documentary rachel or you it's like a big team are you guys a family almost as, as you made this documentary you know you know jimmy uh you know who <laughs> jimmy who's been very active in these these comments and, over here and thank and you for watching knows, rachel those are those are two people are both part of my board game crew and uh, oh. we, we, we you could say that we're like a family sure that is awesome here burley you got any other questions that was mine that was yours um i think was there anybody that you wished that you could get in on the documentary that you weren't able to Ooh, yeah so who did you, you know, miss on charles one of the great things about this documentary is that everybody that we asked said yes um, nice. You know, they were they were very um, like I want to say ninety nine percent of people were were so into it, so down. Um, and one guy that we talked about getting, and it just just logistically it didn't work out. He said yes. He said yes if you can get to me, and that's Alan Moon, uh, Alan oh, Moon, nice. the maker of Ticket to Ride. We didn't get to him because he doesn't really go to conventions, or at least he didn't the years that we were there. But well, maybe, he yeah. did recently, and he made a pretty well, big stir. You and I were at the same convention, I think. Me? Really? Which one was he at? What, his Dice Tower con, his Dice Tower uh, live appearance at Gen Con oh, 2018, 2017? I, you know, I, was, I was there in 2017, Ooh. and I I don't know if he was there. Okay, well, let me say very, when very we, Ribald joke that uh, whoo, Tom Vassell was not too happy with, but you know, the, oh, you know, okay, yeah, one of the well, he basically, he basically <clears throat> said yes, he said yes, but you got to come to Syracuse where he lives, and just it just it just didn't work out. And you know, I wish we could have gotten him in, but you know, just logistically, it didn't work. And we're talking yeah. about Alan Moon, the designer of uh, Ticket to Ride. Lo I would love to have heard your comments because wow, this he. Alan Moon's forgotten more about board gaming than than I'll ever know. So it would have been it would have been really interesting hearing that. <clears throat> yeah, it feels Steve, the name father says it feels like the whole Game Master team is here. That is awesome. And that is the Game Master documentary. So many great scenes that I have. I, I don't remember this actual scene. I think this is from the trailer. It's from the maybe? trailer, actually. It's from the trailer. Okay. And and who who is that in there? So that is Charlie Bink. Uh, oh, okay. You know, Just from a different at, angle. Yeah. Looking at his board game track in the National Parks and the the subtitles on that is actually Reiner Knizia speaking, um, saying the worst thing you can do as a game designer is to fall in love with your ideas that don't work. Yeah, yeah. The man with the bow tie, right? Yeah, bow tie guy. Verla, thank you for uh, for helping me out with the interview. I'm going to send you back down because Charles, 
This is a board game show. You know what that yeah. means. Fun. I do. All I right. Think I do. See you soon. Uh, See ya. Thanks, guys.